the sad tale of an ISP that didn't deploy IPv6. Once upon a time, in the not-so-distant past, a large ISP dominated a country's telecommunication market. This ISP felt powerful and without competition. Whenever someone wanted to connect to the Internet, they would use their services. Everyone envied their market penetration. However, this large ISP had never felt the need to deploy IPv6 because they thought they had enough IP addresses. They saw no indicator telling them they would soon need the new protocol. Those years were filled with happiness. Meanwhile, another, smaller ISP began testing and finally implemented IPv6. Slowly, they began to grow and realized the protocol did indeed make a difference in the eyes of their clients. It was helping them win over new users. Their market penetration continued to grow, and so did their earnings and respect for their services. As they grew, it became easier for them to obtain better equipment, traffic, and interconnection prices. Everything was going well. The small ISP couldn't believe that something as simple as deploying IPv6 could have such a spectacular payoff. By contrast, the large ISP suffered as its customers kept mentioning the need to create VPNs and schedule conferences with other parts of the world, noting that their European and Asian subsidiaries, customers and business partner were already using IPv6 and therefore IPv4 was not important to them. Despite being so powerful, the large ISP began experiencing internal problems that were either billing or money related. The sales team complained they were having trouble closing many deals because customers had started asking for IPv6 and, despite the fact that their ISP was so large and important, they simply didn't have any IPv6 resources to offer. Both corporate customers and residential users were requesting IPv6. Even major state tenders required IPv6. When this began, the sales manager complained to the products, engineering and operation departments, which were left speechless. Some employees were let go. In the end, sales Sales didn't care where the fault lay, they were simply unable to win over any new customers. Realizing they were losing their customer base, part of the sales team accepted job offers at the small ISP, which could now afford the best sales force and was looking to grow its staff. Indeed, it was no longer such a small ISP. Something similar then happened with the large ISP's network manager, an expert who knew a lot about IPv6 but had been unable to overcome the company's bureaucracy and bring the new protocol into production. The network manager brought over his trusted server administrator and head of security. The large ISP couldn't believe what was happening right before its very own eyes. The sales team, hired by the smaller ISP, people who used to work for the large ISP, brought with them their huge customer base, all of them potential prospects. A stampede of the large ISP's clients was on the way. The months went by and the small ISP was was no longer simply offering internet access. Its data center had grown and major companies had brought in new cache servers and other equipment. It was now offering co-location, hosting, virtual hosting, voice and video, and many other services. When the large provider finally decided to deploy IPv6, it had to do it so very quickly. Things went wrong and many errors were made. In addition, certain consultants and companies took advantage of the ISP's problems and charged much much higher rush fees. Network downtime increased, as did the numbers of calls received by the call center. The large ISP began to crumble. As expected, everyone who was part of this story, both clients and providers, ended up deploying IPv6. While real names have been changed, this animation is based on a true network story. This was a tale of how it happened. We hope you enjoyed it.